right here. So it's week uh, week one. Obviously, it's week one. Games get really started tomorrow, but our three teams play this week. And I sat down this morning, and I'm going to give you, this is my viewership guide this weekend. If you're like me, you're going to kind of have the house to yourself. You the, the week one weekend in the Borky house is Michael time. My wife and son and my mother-in-law, are, are, are they're, they're going to leave me alone this weekend, and I've got the day to myself. And so I sat down today, and I'm going to give you a watchability guide this weekend. So obviously, and it starts with the obvious, so I have multiple categories on my watchability rankings this weekend. The obvious, must-watch, games that I think you should watch, and fringe games that I think you should consider watching if you're like me and you have five or six different screens available to you. I've got two screens, my laptop and my iPad ready to go. So I will have four games going on at one time. Four games going on at one time. So if you're like me, those games are for you. So I'll start with the obvious. And the obvious are the three that involve our team's in this state. Ole Miss, for what it's worth, a 22-point favorite at home against Troy. So if you're an Ole Miss fan, obviously you have to watch your team play, hopefully for all three of these games, at least for a little while, before the game gets ugly and you can turn the channel. Mississippi State, obvious number two, for what it's worth, a two-touchdown plus one-and-a-half favorite uh, against Memphis at home, and Southern Miss is a three-point underdog to Liberty. So that's the obvious. We're going to put those aside because I know that you are going to watch your team play. But if you're like me and you have the multiple screens, I've got three games that I would consider must watch games this weekend that you have to watch. If you are a college football fan, you got to watch these three games. The first one actually is tomorrow night. The backyard brawl is back. One of the most underrated nasty, bitter rivalries in college football is back. West Virginia, Pittsburgh, and Keaton Slovis, the Southern Cal transfers we talked about yesterday. Transfer quarterbacks have just taken over college football. He's one of the 50% of uh, transfer quarterbacks that are now starting at their new place, but he took a microphone at a pep rally and said a four-letter word that starts with F that I cannot repeat on this show, West Virginia. The juices are flowing. It's going to be a spicy, spicy environment. West Virginia, Pittsburgh, the backyard brawl. If you love college football, you will love the backyard brawl tomorrow night. West Virginia at Pittsburgh. Nasty, bitter, old school rivalry that we haven't gotten for a while. It is back. Imagine the Egg Bowl not getting played for years years the Egg Bowl not getting played at all and then it comes back what the the angst the atmosphere the whatever you want to describe it around that game the tension that's a good word the tension around that game what that would feel like imagine that that's what you're going to get tomorrow night I think if you're a college football fan and you're not going to watch the Lord of the Rings uh, Amazon show premiere tomorrow uh, that's the game that you have to watch tomorrow night. The Backyard Brawl is back. I've got two on Saturday. Cincinnati at Arkansas, I consider a must-watch game on Saturday, a game that you have to watch, in part because the overwhelming majority of you will have a team that plays Arkansas this year, so you want to see what the Hogs are like. I think the atmosphere is going to be incredible. Yeah, It's a top 25 matchup. There aren't really many of those this weekend, if we're being honest. There aren't many top 25 matchups this weekend, so it's one of the few in an incredible environment, and this is the test for Cincinnati. I think they belonged in the playoff last year. I think that you couldn't argue with me if you think that they didn't belong in the playoff last year. I think they proved it. But the thing is, everybody's gone. Ritter, who is going to end up starting maybe by the end of the year for the Falcons, he's gone. Their top everything are gone. But people are just talking themselves into Cincinnati, not only competing, but possibly pulling the six-point upset here in this game. I think the atmosphere is going to be incredible. I think the game's going to be interesting and, and fun. 
although I am going to pick Arkansas. Spoiler for Friday's show. I'm picking Arkansas to win the game and cover the six, but still. Your teams are going to play Arkansas. It's a top 25 matchup. This weekend, I think that's a game that you have to watch. My second must-watch is Notre Dame at Ohio State. It's a massive, massive line. 17, and what does that say? Does that say more about Ohio State to you or Notre Dame? A 17-point line. I like the Buckeyes in this one. I like C.J. Stroud. I love the, the hire that they made at defensive coordinator, poaching him from Oklahoma State. But look. I make fun of college football's obsession with the big, big, big brands and how it's more than that. But this is the horseshoe. This is Columbus, Ohio. This is C.J. Stroud, who I think will win the Heisman Trophy at the end of this year. It's Notre Dame at Ohio State. Big brands, big atmosphere, hopefully a closer game than the experts in Vegas make you think or think that it will be. And that is uh, my... Second must-watch game of Saturday. Got shortly, but back to my watchability rankings. Watchability rankings. When you are not watching Ole Miss or Mississippi State or Southern Miss, this is the order in which you should prioritize your games. I said the obvious were those three. The must-watch, I picked three must-watch games. The backyard brawl, which is tomorrow night because it's going to be nasty. Cincinnati at Arkansas because... Your team is likely going to be playing Arkansas. It's a ranked game. I like the Hogs in that one to cover, but still. And the Notre Dame at Ohio State because of the brands, the pageantry, all that stuff. Here are games that you should watch this weekend. So dropping down a level from must watch to should watch. Also tomorrow night, you got to double screen it. Again, if, unless you're going to watch the Lord of the Rings premiere, uh, I'm. should I tell you guys this? I, I'm going to. I'll have football on another screen, but I'll be watching them. I'm a nerd, okay? Anyway, anyway, if you're not going to be doing that, second screen tomorrow night, Penn State at Purdue. West Lafayette, it's going to be a fun environment. Purdue throws the football around a little bit. It's not going to be a typical Big Ten matchup, I don't think. I don't think you're going to have, you know, 13 to 10 as your final score, and there's going to be a bunch of punts and boring offense and I formations where they hand it off to a fullback on third and two. It's not going to be that. Purdue doesn't operate that way. And they've got a quarterback, remember, his last time out in the Music City Bowl threw for over 500 yards against Tennessee. They'll sling it, and I think Purdue's going to win that game, actually, tomorrow night. Penn State at Purdue, second screen it, good environment, should be an entertaining game. I think Penn State's going to lose that one, and I think they're going to lose at Auburn coming up in week three, I believe. So that's an important game for James Franklin. He just got that massive contract, and I think they're going to underwhelm uh, again. So that's should watch tomorrow night. Saturday, here's a uh, – uh, this is kind of niche, but that's okay. Virginia Tech at Old Dominion. Virginia Tech at Old Dominion is a game you should watch. North Carolina at Appalachian State is one. If you listen to this show every second of it yesterday, I told you North Carolina is a very – Very light favorite in this game. Very light favorite. One and a half points, depending on the book you look at. Appalachian State has 21 fifth or sixth year seniors on their two deep. That does not count their four year seniors. Fifth or sixth year seniors, Appalachian State has 21 of them. I'm smelling an upset in Boone. That's a game that you should watch. Oregon, Georgia. That's going to be the game that ESPN just hypes, and they hype, and they hype, and Georgia's going to win by four touchdowns. Watch it because of who it is, what the Dan Landing era is going to look like. I mean, the old DCs uh, you know, facing off against his old team and stuff. I just don't think Oregon has the horses uh, that are going to be able to win this game. I don't think they're equipped to win this game. I mean, come on. It's Bo Nix facing off against that Georgia defense, even with what they lost, what they returned. It's not a recipe for a fun game. So put that on TV, too, while you're watching Cincinnati-Arkansas and then put on the Ole Miss game when it starts at 3. So watch it because of who it is, but you don't have to. And then Utah at Florida. The reason I didn't put it as a must-watch is because I think that Notre Dame and Ohio State going on at the same time is more attractive to me. 
So that's the must-watch game of that time slot when you're not watching Mississippi State or Southern Miss in that time slot. It's Ohio State, Notre Dame. But Utah, Florida is compelling as can be. People think that Utah is a contender in the Pac-12, that they can actually win the Pac-12 and be a playoff team. I'm not sure about that, but if they're going to be what people think they are, what a test that's going to be. What should be a good environment in, in a muggy swamp down there in Gainesville so you should watch that game, Utah at Florida. And here's the, the last category, fringe games that I think you should consider checking out. Just think about it. If you've got multiple screens like me, fringe games that you should consider checking out. TCU at Colorado, that's Friday. NC State at ECU. I'm not convinced that NC State's in upset mode there. They're really experienced at quarterback, a very experienced roster overall. I think NC State's a sleeper ACC team. Should be a cool environment for a little while, but I think one team is better than the other, so check it out. Houston at UTSA. Now that's a fascinating one because the winner of that game could possibly be the group of five team that disrupts things. Now, UTSA has to play Texas later, which which hurts, but Houston's ranked. The Alamo Dome's going to be nuts. It's a game you should check out. Army at Coastal Carolina, contrasting offensive styles uh, there. Jamie Chadwell and his offense at Coastal is one of the more fun offenses. If you've never watched Coastal Carolina play, if you haven't watched them play yet uh, this year, or, or excuse me, under Jamie Chadwell. If you haven't seen them play, give them a shot. Grayson McCall's a great quarterback. I thought he was going to hit the transfer portal. He decided to stay. It's a really unique offense. It's really fun to watch. And then they're hosting Army with the the Jeff Munkin triple option. I mean, complete contrasting styles. Could be a really fun football game as well. I mean, if you think that Army's not going to go in there and play well, uh, then I think you've got another thing coming. And lastly... Boise State at Oregon State, it's it's the nightcap on Saturday night. It's a 9 o'clock central start. Oregon State's doing stadium renovations, so the crowd will be half as large as it would be. But if you're looking for a nightcap, Boise State playing on the road at a Power 5 team is uh, it's worth checking out if you're a night owl. So there you go. There are your watchability rankings. I'll run through them again quickly and then get to your text. The watchability rankings... The order in which you should watch games this weekend. The obvious, your three teams must watch. Backyard brawl tomorrow. Cincinnati, Arkansas, Notre Dame, Ohio State. Should watch Penn State, Purdue tomorrow night. Virginia Tech and Old Dominion also. North Carolina at Appalachian State. Oregon, Georgia, Utah at Florida. And fringe games to check out. TCU, Colorado, that's Friday night. NC State at ECU. Houston at UTSA. Army at Coastal. Boise State at Oregon State. There's your watchability guide this weekend in college football. To the text line, 601-879-4395. Uh, we get one here that says Mississippi ties in the backyard brawl tomorrow. Co-defensive coordinator Jordan Leslie for West Virginia is a native of Fulton and coached at Northwest Community College and East Mississippi. That's awesome. I had no idea. I had no idea. So thanks for that. That's pretty cool. I'll uh, keep an eye out for that tomorrow night.